Welcome everybody to another episode of the Wrestling vs. the World podcast. If y'all are enjoying your day, sweet. If not, I don't know what to think or what to tell you at this point. But today I went through a bit of a Wikipedia search for another episode of the podcast and I realized a little something weird. Now we know Billy Gunn, aka Mr. Ass, has gone through a lot of like changes for his characters depending on what company he's in. Because, you know, in TNA, he had Q-Kip. He has, was part of the VKM. He's having a resurgence of popularity in AEW with the whole daddy-ass thing. Scissor made daddy and all that stuff. But I look back at his original WWE run that he had from 96-ish, well, 95-96, up until 2004. And I realized he went through a lot of character changes throughout that entire year. Now, some of them are norm, more notable than others. But I'm going to go through each of them and kind of discuss them in a way so we start right off the bat he started with the tag team the smoking guns with bart gun no relation and they were essentially cowboys giddy up riding on the horses firing blanks out of pistols at the crowds being like ha ha we almost shot your asses but that joke doesn't work in 2023 but essentially they were riding cowboys and yeah, the gimmick worked. The crowd liked them. It wasn't the most over gimmick. They had stuff where you had Sonny getting involved with the tag team, managing them. Eventually, the team broke up, and the tag division was not good during this point. But then again, a lot of stuff was going wrong in the mid-90s with the company anyway. So, the gimmick worked, but it felt better once he shed that. Now, once the once the smoking guns broke up, he started to wear all black. I don't know how to really describe this character. He looked like WCW's The Gambler character that you saw that would appear on those pointless sea shows in WCW back in the day, except Billy Gunn wore pants. Now, you probably don't remember this much because this is around the time that Gunn was kind of off TV a little bit. He was recovering from an injury, so less said the better. Now, the next came his worst gimmick of all time, Rockabilly. Now, throughout 97, Honky Tonk Man was back on television. He was looking for his next protege, and as rumors go, it was supposed to have been Disco Inferno being revealed to be the protege, but they could not get him to sign from WCW because Disco started to stay there, despite not being happy with the company because of the whole Jacqueline shit, but they still needed somebody to fit the place of who this protege is going to be. And at this point, Jesse James, a.k.a. the real Double J, not yet the road dog, was feuding with Honky Tonk Man, and Honky Tonk Man's like, all right, get ready, because at In Your House Revenge of the Taker, you're going to face my protege. And who was it? Billy Gunn, a.k.a. Rockabilly. And all he did was just wear this fancy clothes and just dance all the time. It was just so awful. I mean, if you want the example, I, I, don't, I can't recommend this match just because, like, oh, it's quality, but just if you want a one-off thing, watch the match he had against Jesse James at In Your House Revenge of the Taker. He's just like, yay, Rockabilly, and they made a reference to it later on the following year when DX did that whole segment of flying the airplane of feud with WCW. But it was just awful. He's just a protege of the Honk Tonk Man dancing, hey, hey. It was awful. And after this, thankfully, they dropped the gimmick because they realized, oh, yeah, it's shit. They then decided to turn him heel. Well, no, sorry, kept him heel because they turned Road Dog heel. They decided to form the New Age Outlaws because they realized, hey, our singles careers are going nowhere. Let's team up. And Honky Tonk Man got blasted with his own guitar, so he became Badass Billy Gunn. And you could pretty much describe them as degenerate slash troublemakers. They kind of carried that gimmick over when they joined DX. But they were sophomore type of troublemakers. Just attacking everybody, stealing their stuff, throwing Cactus Jack and Terry Funk off the stage on the dumpster going before WrestleMania 14. That kind of troublemaking shit. So, they are troublemakers. Then you get to Mr. Ass, where he turned heel, he was no longer part of DX, he wanted to be his own man. Essentially, he was just a heel that was all about himself, so kind of a egotistical character. And it was all about his ass, like showing his ass, making sure his ass is worked on by somebody backstage, as we saw in the GTV series. And this was his most successful, in terms of like, a big accolade. Because during this run as Mr. Ass, he became Mr. King of the Ring. But we know what happened after that with The Rock. I mean, it all went downhill from there after the whole God promo that he had on Heat. So, it's like, yeah, he had a big accolade, but that was the peak of it all. So then he eventually turned back to Babyface a slight bit, 
reunited the New Age Outlaws, reverted back to being Mr. Ash slash Badass Billy Gunn, but then they reformed DX's heels and they got injured. Then we got to the next one, which frustrates me. After No Mercy, Billy Gunn was feuding with the whole the right to censor because they were getting involved with China and the Playboy thing. And Billy Gunn lost a match to Steven Richards, or should I say Steven Richards on Raw. And the stipulation was, since Billy Gunn lost, he lost his whole badass slash Mr. Ass identity. So he could not be referred to as badass Billy Gunn, no more of that entrance music or showing his ass. So he was left without a gimmick. After this, he got renamed the one Billy Gunn. Where he had new entrance music, he changed his look a little bit. He got a new finisher, which was like a cobra clutch into a slam. The, my problem, though, with this gimmick, even though he became briefly became Intercontinental Champion when he won it for a few weeks after defeating Eddie Guerrero, how would you describe this character? What was so unique or standoutish about the one Billy Gunn during this run with the company? Because he had this up until late 2001, early 2002, because even during that run, he turned heel when he came back in 2001 before during the middle of the invasion storyline because it was like hey i'm back and i'm mad at you edge for winning king of the ring so he was a heel for a bit then he turned babyface again because of the invasion storyline he teamed with big show and then did nothing relevance so it's like what how would you describe the one billy gun character because he had nothing there was no signature thing nothing cool about him it was just hey he's no longer mr ass and he's got a new finisher Big whoop. Oh yeah, and he was temporarily Intercontinental Champion. And then you get to the other one that he had that actually stood out. He teamed with Chuck Palumbo to make Billy and Chuck. And it was implied that they were a homosexual tag team. Because they had Rico on there. He had the commitment ceremony. They tried in September 2002. But they disavowed it. Even though they were giving off those vibes. It was actually a publicity stunt. They now said, hey, they're not gay. They had nothing against the community. And... Then shortly after they turned babyface because they got attacked by three minute warning and disassociated themselves with Rico because of the attack. Not so long after that, when they turned face, the team broke up because Billy Gunn got injured. And then when he came back, he was once again badass Billy Gunn, but he didn't do much of anything other than have a brief feud with Jamie Noble, and then he just sometimes appeared. He had no like significant roles after that point. So, you look through all these gimmicks, all but one of them you could at least give a description to. Like I said, Smoking Guns, he was a cowboy. Wearing, he was wearing black afterwards with the breakup with Smoking Guns, so he looked like the gam WCW's The Gambler, so he was like an evil cowboy. Rockabilly, he was the musical protege of Honky Tonk Man, but it sucked. Badass Billy Gun, he was a troublemaker slash degenerate. Mr. Ass, he's an egotistical guy, all about his ass and all that. The one Billy Gun, I can't describe that for the life of me. And then Billy and Chuck, tag team was essentially homosexuals. Who knows where that tag team could have gone after that when they turned babyface if they kept it going after disavowing that gimmick. I mean, who they could have made a, like, transition them into a new gimmick and everything, but they couldn't because injuries. So it's just like, you had a lot of these gimmick changes, but like I said, the one Billy Gunn character is one I just did not care for the most. Even just slightly more than Rockabilly, because at least Rockabilly had an identity. You could describe him, but the one Billy Gunn, there was nothing to him. I mean, the closest thing he had to success during that run was the brief run as Intercontinental Champion, which is not, which is like, yeah, it's the Intercontinental Championship, but King of the Ring felt like it was supposed to have been a bit more for like a pivotal point for him to actually do something significant, but then the feud with The Rock happened and went downhill from there. And then with, you even look at his run with the one Billy Gunn in 2001, he, his run in the Royal Rumble match, you don't remember, and he was going for the Hardcore Championship again, which he already went through as before his Mr. Ass gimmick happened in 99. So it's like, what was the point of the one Billy Gunn gimmick? He's just a guy. Like, yay, go, this person was just a guy, he's average in terms of a character. You don't connect to that. There's nothing unique that makes me say, hey, this guy's cool. He's just Billy Gunn. Again, no disrespect for Billy Gunn himself, but I'm just judging on the character for what they gave him. So it's like, yeah, Mr. Ass, he had one peak moment, but at least it was something big. While, like, the Smoking Guns, yeah, it was interesting at the time for, like, Cowboys because he had a bad tag division. He was tagging champions, but it's whatever. That black look didn't last long. The Protege thing sucked. 
badass Billy Gunn and Mr. Ass, they, like I said, they kind of worked, face the old thing, tag team champions, intercontinental, like, pursuit for the intercontinental championship, hardcore champion, stuff like that, when he had the most success with DX. Billy and Chuck, they got attention and everything, but it's just like, some of these work better than others. Like I said, applause to Billy Gunn for being able to have all these different gimmicks, but some were better than others. So anyway, let me know y'all thought in the comment section below about all these different gimmicks that Billy Gunn went through in his time for WWE from 95 slash 96 till 2004. What was your favorite character that he went through and what was your least favorite character? Like I said, my favorite is a mix between, I would have to say more of badass Billy Gunn before Mr. Ass happened because of the downfall and the least favorite... I just barely have to say the one over Rockabilly. It's like, yeah, Rockabilly didn't do shit. But again, at least you could describe that. The one Billy Gunn, I couldn't describe to you for the life of me. One bit. It didn't matter how much content I went through. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, please remember to leave a like. Subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube with the bell turned on. And comment below what you thought below. If you're following this, listening to this on any other podcast sharing service, give me a follow. And hopefully you guys can tune in for more. So thanks for listening, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out. And good day, everybody. And now my ass is sore. No pun intended.